All right, opinion and a question to you all. VR's fastest route to growth isn't in larger accessories or bigger machines, but in minimalism that takes XR, AR, and VR and everything in between and makes it easier and less friction induced to play. That's my opinion and the question is, do you agree with that and do you think what we're about to talk about may lead down that path? Back in March of 2022, Facebook at the time, now unfortunately Meta, revealed some of their research for a wrist-worn input device that Meta believes will be the basic structure of AR and VR interactions, including haptics. Still deep in the research and prototype phases though, this wrist device would sense electrical signals in the user's arm and lead to very direct and purposeful inputs. What is most notable to me here though is that Meta seems absolutely convinced that smaller and less friction induced uh, accessories or modules or any first party support is the key to adoption of these products and I think based on my original opinion I would agree with that although there are some caveats. Use cases explained in March would be a wireless keyboard which I think is absolutely interesting that you can see here. Also, because this process could read finger movements from the wrist, this would allow users to manipulate objects and practically play basic games. And although weirdly enough, mind reading was actually a feature discussed with this quote. This is not akin to mind reading, think of it like this. You can take many photos and choose to share only some of them. Similarly, you have many thoughts and choose to act on only some of them. When that happens, your brain sends signals to your hands and fingers, telling them to move in very specific ways in order to perform actions like typing and swiping. This is about decoding those signals at the wrists, the actions you've already decided to perform, and then translating them into digital commands to your device. So already, I know many people probably have questions, and there's three that I thought about immediately. One is, what is controllerless inputs without haptic feedback? You know, what is that experience? Why is that actually impactful if we don't feel it? Two, when would something like this possibly be coming? And three, what are the privacy concerns? You know, is this overly invasive? And I think many people, especially under the Meta brand, have those questions and I wanna discuss all these very briefly. Now there are a couple haptic prototypes in the works here. Now they're all codenamed Bellowband and Tasby so far. Bellowband reportedly uses quarter-sized bladder-like devices that are on the inside of the wristband that would be inflated to basically put pressure on the wrist, achieving different haptic responses while the TASB model is more familiar and just uses an array of vibrating actuators that again are on the inside of their wristband. This is probably the more known or more accepted form of this where the bladder like bellow band prototype is a little more uh, out there, right? Now this timeline and the reason for this entire video and my excitement really comes from some actual recent news where the prototype was actually being used, where Mark Zuckerberg actually visited uh, the Luxottica brand and their CEO, Leonardo Del Vecchio, the parent company behind Meta's Ray-Ban Story glasses. Now Zuckerberg had this to say about the meeting. Great to be back in Milan to discuss plans for new smart glasses with Leonardo Del Vecchio and the Luxottica team. Here Leonardo is using a prototype of our neural interface EMG wristband that will eventually let you control your glasses and other devices. So a semi-working prototype, alongside one of the largest eyewear monopolies out there, things are becoming a bit more real, but when can we maybe expect these to be a consumer product? These are always tentative dates, anything can change, and if you're asking me, I think anything Mark Zuckerberg says out outwardly is of course best case scenario and what you want to say to instill confidence in the brand and investors so keep that in mind but according to the verge uh there are ar headsets actual ar headsets not just ray-ban stories which i know were said to be ar but they're really just media devices that you know you can record video take pictures listen to music take calls like they're not really ar devices at all but they're saying that meta will have ar devices in 2024 where these types of wristband devices will be the primary means to use them and that's why they're meeting with the Luxottica brand and likely they will be large influences on making that product um, now this is all tentative i'm just really excited about the tech but privacy concerns i think is something that many people are going to be thinking about and with that i say I don't know what you want me to say. Like, let's just be honest. Some people are really going to be adamantly against this because it is slightly invasive, especially when you bring in mind reading techniques. Uh, being able, things happening that you're just thinking about is nice, but it also is scary to some. To me, I'm always going to be an early adopter of products regardless of real privacy concerns because I want to use them. I want to see what they're like and report back to you the good, the bad, the ugly, and the downright scary, and that's important to me. Uh, but this will all play out over time. Is this ultimately what VR devices are going to be going to? Controllerless devices? 
I think down the line something like this, but I'm skeptical if this is the actual solution. But regardless, the R&D behind this is amazing. Anything to reduce friction is good in my book. A uh, little low energy for this video, guys. My child is extremely sick right now, and I'm just a little beat. So sorry for the energy, but that's the video for today. Uh, more tech that I'm excited about. And I'll see you next time, Space Cowboys. Peace.